Jeff Bezos often gets a lot of criticism for quote-unquote copying Elon Musk with his space company Blue Origin. Of course, the landing of their rockets is basically identical and they have many similar developments. But fun fact, Blue Origin was actually founded slightly before SpaceX and Blue Origin's goals are quite different from SpaceX. So here's how Jeff Bezos' vision is radically different from Elon Musk's vision. Before we get started here, let's first establish that it's a no-brainer that both Blue Origin and SpaceX are working on building fully reusable rockets, reducing the cost of space travel, and testing large human space vehicles. This is true with every single space company as these are the foundations of establishing reliable and safe space travel. So we'll concentrate on how they'll each use this technology differently as opposed to how the technologies themselves are similar in nature. With that being said, let's take a look at their first ventures. Ironically, their first ventures are identical, but I promise this is where the similarities end. Both SpaceX and Blue Origin have been working on building their own satellite internet services with Starlink and Kuiper respectively. But this isn't really a goal or vision of either company. This is more of a fundraising effort to actually accomplish their real goals. Moreover, there are already several satellite internet providers around the globe. So this is not an original idea from either of them. So putting that aside, the first major goal for SpaceX is to reach and colonize Mars, while the first major goal of Blue Origin is to reach and colonize the moon. SpaceX has been working for a couple of years at this point on their Starship rocket, which is supposed to be able to carry 100 people to Mars at a time. And SpaceX hopes to bring down the per ticket cost to less than $500,000. Meanwhile, Blue Origin has been working on their lunar landing, the Blue Moon. Earlier this year, NASA actually selected Blue Origin and their lunar landing to help us get back to the moon in 2024. And Jeff Bezos has stated, it is time to go back to the moon, this time to stay. So after their initial developments and fundraising efforts with satellite internet, Blue Origin is aiming to colonize the moon while SpaceX is aiming to colonize Mars. You may be saying, big deal, they're colonizing different terrestrial bodies but it's still the same idea. And you're right, but here's where their visions branch off in completely different directions. At this point, Elon Musk wants to continue colonizing Mars, grow a Mars civilization, and even transform the entire planet, while Jeff Bezos is concerned with moving energy, manufacturing, and other heavy industries onto inhabitable planets. Here's the thing, both Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk agreed that without space exploration, our civilization would reach stasis. But the reasons they provide are not the same. Elon Musk worries that without space exploration, there will be nothing that will get humans excited to continue moving forward one day or another. Meanwhile, Jeff Bezos worries that without space exploration, there will be a plethora of growth limitations within the Earth itself. In other words, Elon Musk is concerned with psychological restrictions, while Jeff Bezos is concerned with logistical restrictions. The thing is, we are using more energy and more resources than ever before. And it's just a matter of time until the Earth cannot support our energy needs. According to Jeff Bezos, as well as Stanford University, our bodies only need 100 watts of energy per hour to run, out of which 60 watts go to our brains. So basically, our bodies are as efficient as 100 watt light bulbs. Of course, if you're doing physically demanding tasks such as sprinting or weightlifting, this number will be in the hundreds per hour. But the energy needed to simply sustain life is approximately only 100 watts. Meanwhile, the average individual living in a developed country uses up 11,000 watts. This includes everything we do on a daily basis that requires energy both directly and indirectly. For instance, if you are watching this video, then you are directly consuming energy, either by using your phone, computer, TV, etc. However, just as much of our energy needs are indirect. A lot of tractors have to be run, 
many semi trucks had to be driven, and several grocery stores had to be run for you to have a meal today. The same thing goes for the water you use and the garbage you throw out. You get the point. Americans, as well as most of the Western world, uses multiples upon multiples more than what we actually need to simply survive. The average American's household energy consumption can support the lives of over 100 people. And that number is still growing despite exponential advances in energy efficiency. This isn't necessarily a bad thing. We have developed various forms of entertainment and luxuries that drain a significant amount of energy. But looking forward, as developing countries start to catch up, we need to produce a lot more energy. Even at just a couple of percent of growth per year in energy consumption, in just a few hundred years, covering every inch of the earth with solar cells will not be enough to meet our societal demands. And Jeff Bezos describes that this eventual shortfall is the real energy crisis of our society and what we really have to focus on if we want to avoid growth restrictions. So what's the solution? Well, Jeff Bezos suggests that we use other planets for energy production as we can support over a trillion humans if we take advantage of collecting solar power from other planets. And the truth is, though going to other planets and colonizing them is super cool, the Earth is by far the best planet in the solar system for supporting human life. Moreover, planets such as Venus and Mercury cannot support life without extreme modifications. The atmospheric pressure on Venus at sea level is 92 times that of the Earth, and the surface temperature of Venus is 500 degrees Celsius or 932 degrees Fahrenheit. Thus, instead of colonizing planets with such extreme conditions for humans, it makes much more sense to use such planets for energy production, especially when you consider that these planets receive much more solar energy than the Earth or any of the other planets. Venus, for instance, receives 40% more solar energy than the Earth and 240 times that of Mars. Similarly, I'm sure that the bright side of Mercury can produce a lot more solar energy than the Earth due to its extremely close proximity to the Sun. So Jeff Bezos' plan is to basically use these planets to power society. But he's not just concerned with energy either. He also wants to off-planet manufacturing. It's no question that we have a lot of pollution on the Earth due to manufacturing. And sure, maybe you can convert cars to electric and planes to electric and even rockets to electric. But what about making the batteries themselves? Battery production puts out anywhere between 56 and 494 kilograms of CO2 for every single kilowatt hour of battery production. So even if we were to transition to 100% electric, producing the battery cells themselves would still be quite polluting. Aside from this, there are many industries that simply cannot be run without pollution, such as various chemical factories and more importantly, agriculture, which we need. Thus, running a civilization with zero pollution is not anywhere near feasible. So we can't eliminate air pollution altogether, but we can eliminate it within the earth. And this is precisely what Jeff Bezos is suggesting. Why don't we just off-planet everything that pollutes the environment? We can put Foxconn and industrial manufacturers and battery producers on Jupiter and Saturn and even Neptune. Of course, we can't actually build anything on the surface of these planets because they're just gas, so we would just sink to the core. But what about Jupiter's 79 moons, Saturn's 82 moons, and Neptune's 14 moons? Surely, that's plenty of space for all of our manufacturing needs. Ideally, by this point, all of the manufacturing that we will put here will be completely automated. This way, no one actually has to live in these terrible places, and we'll simply need some maintenance here and there. By off-planeting these activities, Jeff Bezos claims that for all practical purposes, we'll have unlimited resources. So at the end of the day, if we take a step back and look at their overall visions for space, Elon Musk is basically the little kid who just wants to go to Mars and colonize Mars because he thinks it's super cool and exciting. And that's completely fine, 
we do things for fun and the experience all the time. Meanwhile, Jeff Bezos has more of a business-like perspective. Sure, we may be able to colonize Mars, but the other planets are either way too hot or way too cold and we can't even stand on half of them. Since it doesn't make sense to colonize them, why don't we just exploit them for our own benefit? The closer planets to the sun can be used for energy production and the gas giants can be used for manufacturing. Meanwhile, we can sit on Earth and maybe eventually Mars and live off the fruits of these other desolate planets. Now that I say it, his plan sounds pretty dark and nefarious. But it's either that or ruining the Earth or completely halting growth in the next few hundred years. So I guess it's better than ruining our own planet or stopping progress? I don't know, you guys can be the judge of that. Do you guys think Jeff Bezos plan has merit? Comment that down below. Also, if you guys thought this video explained the key differences between their plans well, then make sure to drop a like and consider subscribing to see more questions logically answered. But until then, I'm Hari and I'll see you guys on the next one.